Hello and welcome to Suncoast Metropolitan Community Church to our worship service. We are so glad that you have joined with us today. We are a church that strives for truth, trust, and transformation. And we are also a church that has been experiencing this series called Roll Down Justice. I hope you have been inspired by it as much as I have. It has been encouraging me in ways that we are called to be in the world. Today, we finish our series with the topic, We Are One, which is such a theme we need to hear today in our country and in the world. And we are blessed today to bring that message, Reverend Brad Rice. We thank you, Brad, for being here. He is one of, uh, Brad is one of our uh, favorite speakers and guests here at Suncoast not only as Reverend Brad Rice, but also as Georgia Moore and calling our bingo. And uh, so we are so excited to have him with us. And we know that he will bring us a beautiful message today. We also are very excited to announce that in our opening song is being brought to us today by Reverend Naomi King, who is also a wonderful friend at the church. And she's actually in Maine and has recorded a song for us. So we will be very blessed to hear her. And now Tammy will come and bring our announcements. There are many activities and ways for you to connect here at Suncoast. Good morning. We want to extend a thanks to all the people who joined our church Zoom last Sunday. We welcomed four new church members to our family, Cindy and Cindy and Carol and Diane. A reminder that next week's worship on Sunday is Remembrance Day. We will be placing leaves on our Memorial Tree of Life for Ray Goines, Michael Laspisa, Jody Davis, or as we knew her, Byram, and Doris Rigger, or Riggy. If you would like to contribute towards a memorial leaf, please contact the church office or give through your regular means and indicate the name of the person or persons you are donating for. This Saturday, September 12th, there will be social distance bicycling. That's right, bicycling. Meet at the Venice Train Depot at 8 a.m. and follow the instructions in Staying Connected newsletter if you're going to so that they know who to look for. After resting up from bicycling, join us Saturday evening at 6.30 for an inside your home scavenger hunt on Zoom. You might be surprised what other people have in their homes and what you'll find in yours. Prizes will be awarded. Speaking of prizes, there's a rumor about a crown circling for trivia winners. Trivia will resume on September 14th and go Monday evenings all the way through the end of October. On the following day after trivia starts on the 14th, Tuesday the 15th, we have another round of Pictionary. Both activities have included a lot of fun and laughter and a lot of competition. On Tuesday, September 22nd, our pastors will start a new virtual education class called The Passionate Jesus. This is a great way to interact and learn together. Speaking of learning together, we have a drumming circle again. It's back beginning on Wednesday, September 16th, and it's here on our property in Venice. It's a great way to pound out some stress and a chance to interact in a safe way. We're also going to be learning a new rhythm that will be recorded for an upcoming worship service. We all love the virtual choir this past Sunday. They're going to start another one on September 23rd, there'll be a meeting to discuss a second production, and we'd love to have as many people join as possible. Lastly, save the date for Friday, September 25th at 6.30 p.m. for an outdoor event to celebrate homecoming. More details of these activities are on our website and in our Staying Connected newsletter. And now, let us prepare our hearts for worship. The 
was a voice strong and clear, ringing out far and near. Let justice roll down. Let justice roll down, like the rush of a stream. Comes a powerful dream. Justice roll down, justice roll down. As we end our series, Roll Down Justice, we know that the day is coming when our sovereign God will move with the hand of justice and the heart of love. The will of heaven on this earth will be done. The life of Jesus was a vision of a coming day when power is displayed, not with military might, but through the solidarity of all people in the name of love and justice. We affirm our oneness with the whole human family and pray that we may support one another and not tear each other down because of our differences. Justice-making God, we join Jesus' path this day. May peace flow. Let justice roll. Give us courage and a heart for each other. May peace flow. Let justice roll. We yearn for your reign and we proclaim the day is coming. May peace flow. Let justice roll. I know this rose will open by Mary Gregoria. I know this rose will open. I know my fear will burn away. I know my soul will unfurl its wings. I know this rose will open. I know this rose will open. I know my fear will burn away. I know my soul will unfurl its wings. I know this rose will open. Good morning. Today's reading is from the prophet Isaiah. The desert and the dry land will be glad. The wilderness will rejoice and blossom like the crocus. They will burst into bloom and rejoice with joy and singing. They will receive the glory of Lebanon, the splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory, the splendor of God. Strengthen the weak hands and support the unsteady knees. Say to those who are panicking, be strong, don't fear. Here's your God, coming with vengeance and with divine retribution. God will come to save you. Then the eyes of those who cannot see will be opened, and the ears of those who cannot hear will be cleared. Then those who cannot walk will leap like the deer, and the tongue of the speechless will sing. Water will spring up in the desert and streams in the wilderness. The burning sand will become a pool and the thirsty ground fountains of water. The jackal's habitat, a pasture. Grass will become reeds and rushes. A highway will be there 
it will be called the holy way. The unclean won't travel on it, but it will be for those walking on that way. Even fools won't get lost on it. No lion will be there, and no predator will go up to it. None of these will be there. Only the redeemed will walk on it. God's ransomed ones will return and enter Zion with singing, with everlasting joy upon their heads. Happiness and joy will overwhelm them. Grief and groaning will flee away. May God bless the reading of this holy word. Suffering servant, Hosanna, Hosanna, Jesus is coming, Hosanna, to the Prince of Peace, Hosanna, Jesus is coming, Hosanna, to the Prince of Peace. Good morning. The Gospel according to John. Jesus prays for the disciples. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, Mother, are in me, and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one. In them and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them, even as you have loved me. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Years ago, I had a church member say, well, why is it we have guest preachers, especially if we're paying you to preach? Um, and, um, I, and a voice of a, 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 someone who became a dear friend and became an MCC minister, Barbara Haynes, said out loud, well, you can't always eat your own cooking. And so I'm prepared today not to eat my own cooking, but to uh, hear, hear something wonderful served up by Reverend Brad Rice, who, as Reverend Vicki said, is a favorite here at Suncoast. Reverend Brad is a teacher uh, in Tampa, uh, and uh, we're so glad that he came today to offer this message. He and his husband, Robert, have delighted us at Venice Pride, and uh, he's just a great favorite here. He's an enthusiastic preacher and teacher who has a wonderful message for us today. Will you welcome Reverend Brad Rice?
Thank you, Reverend Nancy and Reverend Vicki. Thank you so much for a warm introduction. And I feel like every time I come here, I feel like I'm always back at home. Um, every time I'm here, it just puts me in a good spirit and I just feel just blessed to be a part of this community, whether it's uh, virtually or on Zoom or at home, wherever you are. So thank you. 2020. What can we say? It has been one for the record books. I tell my students all the time that when I'm teaching 15, 20 years down the road and I'm ending up teaching their children or their grandchildren, um, they will, I will tell them that 2020 has its own chapter and it will have its own unit and it will have its own essay and it will have its own multiple choice test. It's been a year. As we are preparing for this final quarter of the year that has been painful at its best, we have had some unforgettable moments. And moments, quite frankly, we wish we would just forget. I sit here composing a sermon reflecting on my experience as my, as my days as a high school teacher. I will never forget that last day in March of 2020 before the inevitable COVID shut down our schools, our churches, our restaurants and bars that we called home. And then our state was shut down. I walked through the halls that Friday in March, touching the walls, wondering, pleading, begging for this thing to blow over. You know, one of the occupational hazards of a history teacher, especially American history, is recognizing that Americans don't deal with such a government order sometimes. And I have to tell you, I knew it wasn't going to be pretty. I found myself looking at my classroom for what I didn't know was going to be the last time for months. Walking out of that school on the Friday before spring break was somewhat of a surreal experience for me. I kept asking myself, when will I see my students again? When are we getting back to normalcy? Or better yet, will this be the new normal? Well, and we all know this story. A week turned into two, which turned into a month, which turned into a season. It felt like we were in the middle of a boxing match. The United States and Florida, for that matter, were on the ropes trying to grab a bet, breath while the boxer COVID kept throwing punch after punch at us. Then came George Floyd. Then came more restrictions. Then came skyrocketing unemployment. Then came an intensely heated presidential election. Civil rights icon John Lewis passed away. And other times, every time that we tried to try to catch a breath at just getting worse and worse. It seemed there was another blow time after time again, and it just seemed impossible. But then you hear a still, small voice, gentle like a hummingbird's wings. That reference was for you, Reverend Nancy. But powerful like an ocean wave, and that reference was for you, Reverend Vicki, that with God, nothing, nothing is impossible. I think this is the main idea of our author this morning. You know, scholarship reminds us that this poem is a healing alternative to the church's grim despair and to our modern sensibilities that no real newness is possible. This text, although reserved for the season of Advent to prepare us for the dark days ahead, is completely appropriate for the times we are living in. Almost as if we are living in a world that has yet to awaken from its times of Advent gloom and doom. So as we read this passage, spoken like a true Baptocostal, there are three things that point to justice in this passage that can prepare us for how God is completely coming to make all things new. The first thing, God comes to save in our passage, we see the author speaks of how God is always constantly coming to rescue. And looking around, there is a lot to be rescued from. Amen? 
We see anxiety rising in our seniors and our young adults. Our students are wondering, are we going to ever get back to the classroom? Unemployment and people are wondering, wondering if they can ever make their ends meet, even now. Confidence in our world is sinking, questioning our own sense of self in the process. The beautiful thing, however, and this is something that we should never forget, is that God promises us that God will come in power both to work good and to eliminate any threats to our existence, which is a good and glorious thing as well. You know, this past summer, as we were stuck in the middle of this COVID crisis, I couldn't help but feel that our way of life was threatened. And how are we ever going to return to those places that felt safe and normal? This passage tells me, however, that God will always be fighting with us and for us will never leave us stranded and will always work to give us the most fulfilling life possible. Which brings me to my second point. God ain't done yet. In this world, we always see trouble spots. And no, I'm not talking about geographical hot spots or trouble spots. I'm talking about the trouble spots that exist within each of us, in our souls and in our spirits, the burdens, the heavy things that we carry along with us that we just can't seem to leave at the altar. Our own humanity seems to be in despair. We seem to be broken. We seem to be just shut down. Our author reminds us that we desperately yearn for rescue for God to save us, for God to continue working with us. We forget that God is still working. God ain't done with us yet. God has not written the final chapter of our book. In fact, God is only just beginning. God is calling each and every one of us to stand in solidarity with our community to keep pressing on, sharing an all-inclusive, overflowing, warming, embrace love that is tender as a soft touch, but stronger than the most durable metal. As a church in 2020, this looks radically different than just six months ago. I don't know about y'all, but I'm used to having 150 people in the audience just waiting to hear the, what the message of God brings to us on every Sunday morning. And even though we want to have this place packed with two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hundred people, don't tell the fire marshal that, but eight hundred people ready to hear the praises of an all-inclusive God, one of the things that we do now is that we have a worldwide audience from all over. Not just Venice, not just Northport, not just, is it Nokomis? Yeah. Not just Nokomis, got that one right. Not just all these other places that are in Osprey, all these places, but from places like Canada, Italy, California, all over the world ready and still hungry for a message of power and all-inclusive love. Suncoast MCC, you now have the capability to reach out, draw the circle wide, as that song used to say, and draw it wider, to reach out to a wider audience, to draw that circle thanks to our online capabilities. We, and I mean you, are able to cast a net far and wide and spread the love of a God that is always sitting on the side of those who speak out against injustice in God's community. We get to still speak up 
for the voiceless. We can give power to the powerless. We get to stand up with the weak. We get to touch the broken and the downtrodden. We become active in places that are feel safe and comfortable. We get to walk with those who just can't take one more step. We love those who feel unloved and worthy. Why? Because we have been there, but so has God. We get to share with a broken world that has God serving as the glue, the super glue. I'm talking about that dollar store super glue that just, that just does not go away. God is the cement that puts us back together again, dusts us off, says, I love you, embraces us, and sends us on our merry way, knowing that we get to share in a gift of eternal life and love for all those who desire it. Which brings me to my third point. God doesn't just have our past. God just doesn't say, we, I know where you've been. God doesn't just get to say in the second point that I know where you are now. But my third point is God saying to us now, you have a future too. And I will be with you in that future. It is obvious that as we sit here from our perspective, it's easy for us to look around and say, my goodness, this stuff is happening. It's easy for us to look very sorrowful at the world to come. Climate change is still an issue. Political and racial tensions are still an issue. Our economy is still an issue. Our geopolitical atmosphere is still an issue. It is easy to imagine a world without hope, without peace, without comfort. But I'm here to tell you today that God is the peace that passes all understanding. That as we continue to bring God in this present, in this present experience that we have, God will still be present in our future and will always be a gentle reminder of who we are and whose we are. You know, this reminds me of a story. You know, I love teaching and I love my 11th graders who are now seniors who are about to graduate. And I did tell them I can't, I can't watch them graduate. I said, because I'm going to be this sticky, cry, just messy cry stuff because I, you know, just miss them, love them so much. And I'm glad you're getting that recorded too. Last year, last year, so I, last year I taught his, U.S. history to a bunch of 11th graders. And they were the kind of kids that no matter what you would do, no matter what you would say, they just kind of molded into your heart. It was a very special group. And yet, as we were saying our goodbyes at the end of the year, some of them left wondering, are we going to have you next year? And it was uncertain. I didn't know. I didn't know what was going to happen because I didn't know our future. They were threatening to riot the school if they were not going to have me. They were going to tell the guidance counselor, listen, whatever you need to do, make it work. I always answered in the negative because, again, I never knew what was going to happen. Over the summer, their wonder became a reality when they opened their schedule and saw my name scattered across that paper. I actually had one student call me and said, Papa Rice, I'm back. I said, so am I. <laughs> See, I believe that we are like these 11th graders that I had last year. We're always trying to wonder if we're going to have a God who is familiar with us. A God who is always loving and pushing us. A God who is always finding us scooping us up and embracing the totality of our life experiences and saying, I know you, I love you, I'm with you. See, this passage, even though it was remarked for the darkest days of Advent, 
This passage gave me hope today. That we belong to a sacred community that believes in a God that has never left us. That God never leaves us. And God will never leave us. So this morning I encourage you, no matter what goes on in this world, no matter where the COVID numbers are, no matter what happens in our reality or in our experience, God is there waiting. God is there watching. And God is always being faithful to us. My prayer for this morning is wherever you are, that may you always feel God's steady, justice-filled presence in a world complete with chaos because, again, with, with God, nothing is impossible. Blessings and amen.
as we come to our prayer time this morning, you know, this whole season we've been making a fist and imagining those things that we've been holding on to that have hindered us from allowing justice to occur around us. And as we've done this, we've let go. We've imagined cool water running into our hands and letting go of our prejudices, letting go of walls of division and fear. We've also opened our hands to joy and opened our hands to forgiveness. So I invite you today, as we come to our prayer time, to start with open hands. And this time, imagine that your hands are opened to reach out, to be at one. Maybe with somebody that you even have a deep difference with. And as we open our hands, think about being in solidarity with those around us and with our world today. We come before you, God of justice, with varying degrees of readiness to walk hand in hand in the march for love. Open us to know your conditional love so that we may extend that love and unity in the name of justice. Oh God, today we pray for members of our church, for their safety, for the well-being, their emotional, physical, and spiritual health. God, sustain each of us in this time. Wherever you are today, I invite you to say aloud or in your mind the names of those who need God's touch. We also pray for our MCC denominational leaders, our sister church, The Circle in Milan, Italy, and all pastors and church members struggling through this difficult global crisis. We pray for those whose names we do not know, but yet for whom our hearts break today. Those affected by the coronavirus, those affected by hurricanes and floods and wildfires. We pray for healing and peace and justice and unity in our own land today. In unity, let us pray the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Good morning, family. In another week, we are virus-free. This is the day the Lord has made. I would like to send greetings from your board and share that we are monitoring closely every expenditure and commitment to strive to keep our church financially healthy. We have also been maintaining our church grounds and facilities to keep everything in working order. And of course, we are planning already for 2021 and the exciting things God will do for us in the future. We all realize while home, all the monthly household expenses still arrive in our mailboxes, so as to the church. So we honor those and need to continue to con consider to keep our doors open, and the board thanks you for your continued support. Your wonderful response to the capital campaign was a big help, and we thank you for that. Your weekly offerings are also especially important and valuable. There are many ways to continue to tithe by mail, dropping off the envelopes Tuesdays and Thursdays from 11 to 3, and easy tie. May God bless each and every one of you. Stay safe and wear your mask.
my home. Thank you. Oh. Hi. 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 Oh, it's so good to see you again. <laughs> you too. Oh my gosh. Out of the ruins and rubble, out of the smoke, out of a night of struggle, can we see a ray of hope? One pale thin ray reaching for. A city of angels, we can build a city of men. We may not reach the ending, but we can start slowly but truly mending brick by brick. Start learning how we can build a beautiful city. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. We can build a beautiful city. Not a city of angels, but we can build a city. When your faith is all but killed, you can give up bitter and battered. Or you can slowly start to build a beautiful city. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Not a city of angels, but finally, finally, a city of man, a city of man, city of Jesus Christ, friend and savior, move us closer to compassion and courage to speak up and stand up for what is right and good. May we follow the example of Jesus to be at one with the divine and one with each other so that justice may roll down like waters. As a sign of our commitment to Christ, let us gather around this table and around our tables in our homes today. New birth for creation broke forth upon us in Jesus. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time has come when you would save your people. Jesus healed the sick. He fed the hungry and ate 
with sinners. In these acts of love and justice, we see the birth of our call as church to let the waters of justice roll, knowing that we have been delivered from death through a covenant of water and the Spirit. Like the woman at the well, I was seeking for things that could not satisfy. But then I heard my Savior speaking, draw from my well that never shall run dry. Fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up, Lord, Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up and make me whole. Take and eat this bread today. I am with you. My body offered for you here. Come drink the wine of freedom gladly. My love embodied as we all draw near. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up, and make me whole. Pour out your Holy Spirit on our union with each other and with these gifts of bread and cup. God, just as you transform these common elements into what we need, so also transform our hearts that we may bring wholeness to the broken and unity in the midst of division. Amen. All are invited to come to this feast where there is enough enough room around the table, enough grace for all, no matter what your journey has been. Indeed, where you are enough, you need only be hungry, that's it. Hungry for love, for justice, for change, for reconciliation, for whatever your heart yearns for. You can even just be hungry for food, for bread of life, or just bread. My favorite part is that in MCCs around the world, all are welcome to this table. No exception. God knows what you need. Come and receive it, and by this, be inspired to offer it to the world. As you feel comfortable, please dip the bread in the juice. You may serve yourself and invite anyone else in your home to serve themselves as well. Receive this, the bread of life and the cup of heaven, given for us from our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. After the service, if you have any leftover juice or bread, please consume them now. Let us pray. God, we thank you for welcoming and serving us at this open table of justice. We give thanks for the way in which our offerings 
will become our work in the world and for the gift of this community bound and working together in Jesus' name. Amen. And may we realize that who we are together is infinitely stronger than who we are alone. May we affirm our oneness with all of the human family as we partner with God to let justice roll down. Amen. I've got strength like a mountain. I've got strength like a mountain. I've got strength like a mountain in my soul. I've got strength like a mountain. I've got strength like a mountain. I've got strength like a mountain in my soul. I've got strength like a mountain. I've got strength like a mountain. I've got strength like a mountain in my soul. I've got strength like a mountain. I've got strength like a mountain. I've got strength like a mountain in my soul.